Okay, in this video, we are going to have a look at a very simple sensor. This is a capacitance touch sensor. It has three pins. The pin on the very left is ground. The pin in the middle is VCC, which could be 3.3 volts or 5 volts. And the pin on the very right is a signal output, which is active high. So when I touch the sensor, either on the front or on the back, there's a the touch plate. The signal output will go high to 5 volts. So in this video, we're going to wire this uh, sensor up in standalone, and then we're going to interface it to a microcontroller. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the touch sensor configured in standalone mode. So here's a sensor with the three pins. We've got a ground pin, our VCC pin, and our signal output pin. So the ground pin is connected to common ground. The VCC pin is connected to plus 5 volts. And a signal output pin is connected to a 1K ohm resistor in series with an LED to ground. Now when we touch the sensor with our finger and we hold it there, the LED will come on and then when we release, the LED will go off. Now this video is going to be very simple. My target audience is beginners in electronics. So if you're experienced in electronics, this video might not be too interesting, so feel free to opt out. So next we're going to take the sensor, mount it on a breadboard, and wire it up as per the schematic. Okay, I plugged my touch sensor into my breadboard. Now this is going to be my plus 5 volt rail. It goes along the top of my breadboard. And in the middle it gets broken, so I have a little jumper. And then it continues on to the end. This is going to be my ground rail. And it moves along the bottom. And it gets broken in the middle, so I have a jumper. Now this jumper is bare wire. So I could hook up my ground lead of my scope, or my meter, for test purposes. And here's our three, three pins. So the first one is grounded. You can see this is our ground. Second pin goes up to the 5 volt rail, the third pin goes to the resistor, and then the LED to ground. So we're going to hook up power to the plus and minus rails of this uh, breadboard and power up the touch switch and check out its operation. Okay, I have my touch sensor powered up with 5 volts. You can see the power LED light is on on the module indicating it sees 5 volts. And the power is coming from my power supply. You can see the two power supply leads. I got my red lead so my plus 5 volts is connected to the top rail and my ground lead is my black lead and it's connected to my uh, bottom rail. So if I touch the sensor, either in the back or the front, if I touch and hold, see the LED comes on, I release, it goes off. I can do it from the front, same thing. Now if I pulsate it, and we look at the scope, you can see it's very clean, there's no chatter, or there's no bounce. So we don't have to worry about any type of debouncing circuit when we're uh, hooking it up to a microcontroller. So next we're going to have a look on how we could build these power leads because if you're going to get into electronics you'll need some uh, power supply leads that could plug into your breadboard for experimentation. Okay, here's my power cable to power up circuits on my breadboard which you could build yourself. It's very easy. Get yourself some test lead cable, black and red. You get that in any electronics supply store. Get some black and red banana plugs and these are the non-solder type and I'll show you how to install them. And then get some single row uh, pin headers and break them off in twos, in pairs, and solder them on. So now you can just plug that into your breadboard, into your plus and minus rails. So next I'm going to show you how we could uh, apply these banana plugs to this test lead cable. And you can buy the banana plugs, this one here. It unscrews. And you get some test lead cable. And you slide the, the bottom cap over the cable. And then you put it, the wire up through the connector and there's a little hole it's going to come out of. And you push it all the way through. So it's all the way up like that. And then you, then you turn it clockwise around the edge. And bring it around. Like that. So now you bring up the, the bottom cap. And as it screws up it's going to, it's going to tighten the wire against that edge. So it makes a very good connection. And I like this because after the years, that's going to be your strain point. And if it breaks there, if you're out in the field, you can take it apart, cut it, strip it, reconnect it, and away you go. So it's a very handy connector, very easy to do, very easy to put on, and you could use it in a lot of your projects. Okay, next, we're going to check out the capabilities of this little touch sensor. So I have an enclosure here. This is a colored plastic enclosure. So we could actually mount this touch switch inside an enclosure and activate it from the outside. So I'll take off the top just to show you. 
I'll put this behind. Now if I touch in the back, it actually activates through the plastic. Okay, here's a past project that would be a good candidate for my touch switch. So this is a dust-proof box for dirty environments. And I didn't want to drill any holes in, in this box for switches. And it's sealed with an O-ring. So I could actually mount one of these inside and control it by touching it. Now what I found, you could accidentally touch it, so you'd have two of them. One you'd mount on the side, and the other one you'd mount on the top. So it's a two-step activation, so you'd press and hold the side one, then pulse the top one. I found that that works out pretty good. Now this one, there's a battery inside, and right now there's zero current coming out of this battery. So to turn it on, I have a piezo speaker, so if I tap it, turns on, you can see the LED is on, so now my switch would be powered and I could control uh, the microcontroller and then I could turn it off with a switch or it will time out if there's no activity uh, the LED will start blinking, she'll time out and then it will shut down the, the circuitry so there will be zero current uh, coming out of the battery. So there she's blinking then she'll time out, now there's zero current coming out of the battery now to activate it again you just have to give it a tap Okay, the output of my touch sensor is fed into pin 3 of my microcontroller board, my SCAM board. The grounds are connected together and I'm powering my touch sensor with 3.3 volts coming from the SCAM board. So we have 5 volts coming into the USB port. There's a 3.3 volt regulator which is powering the touch sensor. So now when I touch the sensor, I have a program. It's going to light all the LEDs on the SCAM board. So when you're starting to program, instead of using a mechanical switch, if you use a, a touch switch, there's no uh, bounce, there's no uh, contact bounce, so it makes your code a lot simpler. So for starting out, this is a good way to, uh, to start uh, programming using a touch sensor in, instead of a mechanical switch. Okay, I have another program running on the SCAMP board, which is a toggle function. So when I press on my touch sensor, you can see it's toggling the LEDs. So just a matter of software. So once we got our touch sensor connected up to a microcontroller, now we can control anything through software. Okay, so that was my little tutorial on this touch sensor. This is a good project for beginners. It's a very simple sensor. It's only got three uh, pins. Uh, you can do some breadboarding and then hook it up to your favorite microcontroller and see what kind of devices you could control using a touch switch.